microphone And you have downed in your car to your home Every week it's all the new A deep talk or an interview She'll make it laugh, she'll make it cry When it's dark out, she's a light Hi, friends, and welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun, our 10th anniversary year of the podcast. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs. I'm so happy to be here with you today. And before we dive into today's conversation, I want to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. While you might be thinking about some new rhythms this year, and we even talk about healthy emotions and relationships today with Mike Foster, consider what role therapy could play for you in 2024. It's been such an incredible tool in my life and has allowed me to heal and grow and evolve in ways that I'm just so grateful for. So if you've been on the fence about therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try this year. They've made it so simple to get started. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Your session can be done from right at home. All you do is fill out a brief questionnaire. We love a quiz to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge because finding the right match for you is really important too. Let's celebrate the progress you've already made and keep building on it. Visit betterhelp.com slash that sounds fun today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash that sounds fun. Today on the show, I get to talk with my friend, Mike Foster. You may know Mike from his podcast, Fun Therapy, or from his best-selling books like People of the Second Chance. And today we talk about his latest book, The Seven Primal Questions, which is a framework to help you find emotional freedom and healing. I think this is such a great conversation for us to have to really step into 2024 with all the information we need to have to make what Emily P. Freeman says, the next right step for ourselves, our emotions, our relationships. I'm so thankful for the work that Mike has put in to help us get there. Man, this feels like God has got a theme for us, and we are in the middle of it. So we are talking today about how we are our healthiest selves emotionally, just like we talked about our spiritual health, our physical health. We're talking about our emotional health today. And I and I'm telling you, these seven primal questions are brilliant. I cannot wait for y'all to hear this conversation with my friend Mike Foster. That's a- Mike Foster, here's what I can't believe as we start this episode. You've never been on That Sounds Fun. (laughs) Never. I'm so embarrassed. So let me lead with my embarrassment because you are so important to me. I cannot imagine that you haven't been on the show. So I'm so sorry. I've just hidden you away. I apologize. But welcome to That Sounds Fun. I am so honored to be here. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a long time. And it's just good to to be connecting and, and talking with you today, Annie. Oh, I feel the same. Okay, so first of all, the first question we're asking this year and year 10 of That Sounds Fun is because the show is called That Sounds Fun, tell me what sounds fun to you, Mike. Oh my gosh. Uh, what's, what's kind of funny is uh, I always get accused of not being very fun. I tend oh, to be wow. like the more serious guy or uh, the quieter guy or the thinker, reader guy. But you know what yeah. sounds fun to me is sitting on my patio and I've got a little fountain out there and yeah. just reading a really nice book in the San Diego, underneath yes. the San Diego sun. Yes. So that sounds fun to me. That is a good answer. Are you reading, are you a reader of fiction and nonfiction or are you just like learning all the time? Uh, learning all the time. I, I prefer know. nonfiction. Yeah. But uh, like there's probably like five books in my bag right now that I'm reading. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I, I just love learning, love uh, discovering new things. And so, yeah. When you start a new year like this, is there a book you always pick up? Is there a book that you like go back to? I mean, besides, obviously the Bible is the Jesus answer that we believe in. But is there like <laughs> another, is there something you go back to or is there a rhythm that you have about reading in the new year? You know, it's pretty uh, all over the place. I'm not very organized that way. I probably should revisit uh, things, but I take really good notes when I'm reading books. And oh. so it's not that I necessarily go back to the book to read it again, but I'll go back to the first couple pages where I've just scribbled all kinds of notes and things that stood out from the book and I'll review that. So it's almost like a cliff cliff notes version Oh my gosh, of the book. so you open the front cover of the book and you write your notes right there. Yes. Mike, that is brilliant. So then did you lend your books out? No. No. no, no. Yeah, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is my library for eternity. Yeah, it's like my journals. I wouldn't lend out my journals. So oh it's like gosh. these books. Yeah. So that's kind of how, how my process works. 
Do you know, I have a, I have a, my, one of my favorite creative books is Walking on Water by Madeline LaEngle. And I was gifting oh, yeah. a copy to a man at Christmas. And I, the cover I have is this beautiful, like, stained glass cover. And they don't make it anymore because I got the book in, you know, 2003 or something. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give him my copy because this is a really beautiful cover. And I started flipping through it. I was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> this stays right here. I'm not putting this. And so I got another copy for him but I was like no 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 there's no world where I'm putting it, it much like you I'm not handing my journal <laughs> off as a Christmas gift exactly there's too was, much uh, vulnerable stuff in those notes that that's we exactly can't just right. hand out to the world <laughs> um, okay San Diego weather in January is it the best it's pretty good. It's yeah. it's just uh, I pinch myself every once in a while going I can't believe I get to live here and uh, obviously there's a lot of downside traffic taxes not so great yeah. but the weather is incredible. And so I do like to spend a lot of time on that patio. It's Gosh, super I fun bet. to me to uh, uh, all through the year be able to just kind of be, and we got a little fireplace out there too. So it's just yeah. like my perfect spot. I don't yeah. want to go anywhere, Annie, except my patio. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think that's perfect. I'm jealous. I have a porch that I love like that too, but I can only sit on it about nine months out of the year, not 12. So Nashville well, come, makes a way. Come out to San Diego. I know. I need to. I've never been there. <gasps> Oh, man, I know. We gotta fix that. I know. Bob says the same thing to me. And I'm like, I know. I just have never been down there. Yeah, Bob Goff, we're kind of the unofficial mayors of San Diego. 100%. So Bob's really y'all are the mayor. The, I'm the co mayor. Y'all are the two people I think of the most when I think of San Diego. Um, okay, so here's why I thought you'd been on the show. We talked about this for a second before we started. I was on an episode of your podcast, Fun Therapy, in yes. fall of 2017. And I know it's oh so gosh. clearly because it literally changed my life. And and so let's let's talk about fun therapy for a minute. I, I don't think you do that show anymore, right? But the episodes are all there for people to listen to. All the episodes are there. The episode that we did in 2017 is there. And yeah, it's just a it's really like a mini therapy session that yeah. listeners get to listen into. Yeah, it ruined my life, Mike Foster. You know that. <laughs> I mean, tell I'm the so truth. Sorry. <laughs> tell the truth. We hit stop. And what did you tell me to do? Do you remember? I don't. I didn't remember. You told me to go to on site. <laughs> oh, that's right. I do remember that. Yes. <laughs> you literally were like, Annie, I love you. I think it's. Have you heard of a place called Onsite? Yes. <laughs> I was in. And you did. Didn't I did. You? It changed my life. Yes. I mean, I was in so much profound pain the day, mm. the season that you and I sat down. It wasn't just that day, but I, it was a couple of weeks. I was in such profound pain. And and I mean, I, I think you and I recorded in like November or something, and I was at Onsite in January. I was at Onsite, how many years ago is that? Seven, seven years ago, right now, as people are listening to mm. this. Oh I went the gosh. first week of January. So six years, seven years ago, no, six years ago, because it was 2018. So thank you, Mike. I mean, you, that one conversation, your, your investment in my life over a bunch of years always seems to be like Ebenezer Stone moments. We only Mm. get a few of them, but they always seem to like mark my life. And so I just wanted to publicly thank you for marking my life in such a profound way with that fun therapy conversation. Well, I am so proud of you uh, for just digging in and doing that work. And that conversation was uh, just so powerful, your vulnerability. And I think it gave all of us the permission to dig into the things that um, hurt sometimes and are painful sometimes. And so um, I'm always inspired by Yanni because I think there's just a, a willingness, like whatever whatever is there, whatever we yeah. discover inside of ourselves, like if it... if if it needs healing, let's go after that healing. Yeah. And you did that and, yeah. and are, are uh, getting the, the rewards of that work. Yeah. I mean, the, the beautiful thing they say at Onsite is, and it doesn't just have to be Onsite. There are so many resources like this. It's just the one that yes. I've experienced, um, is they say, this doesn't change your life in 180 degrees. It changes your life two degrees. And mm. over time, you will see that. And I'm like, oh, I, I can see that so profoundly now. Six years later, I'm like, oh, my life is a, in a different continent <laughs> because at, at those two degrees over six years has been so profoundly changing for me. Mm. So, man, I'm, I'm just so thankful That's for Miles awesome. and I, what on site I actually 
when I describe what I do with people, I always describe myself as a bumper. Like yeah. I just kind of come in and I'll bump them just a little bit. Yeah. Kind of bring some clarity, bring some some truth, hopefully uh, a next action item and just bump them. And then usually people know what to do from that, that point on. Yeah. But um, I love those moments where we get to just kind of have a little bump yeah. and you got bumped and yeah. <laughs> now you're, you're, you're just thriving and doing, All the better for doing it. amazing stuff. All the better so. for it. Um, one of the things we're doing this year, and I, I've been really thoughtful about this, Mike, because when, when I want to be more spiritually healthy, I, as I pursue that, I love sharing those resources with my friends that are on the other mm -hmm. side of my work. When I want to be more physically healthy, I want to share those resources. It doesn't mean everyone has to adopt everything I do, but I want to share what I'm experiencing. And so when it comes to my emotional health and my mental health, I want to do the same. So having you on at the start of this year was so important to me because of the seven primal questions. So will you mm. kind of, I mean, we're going to dig into this and I am going to cry, but let, can we start with like, how did you come up with this? how did you come up with these seven primal questions? Yeah. So, um, so I'm an executive coach last five years have been kind of in the trenches with people, uh, studying their deepest emotional need. And so mm -hmm. 6,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one interviews, five years wow. of research. We've had over 10,000 people take the assessment, the primal question assessment. And really like my, my goal is to help simplify what's going on inside of us because sometimes that can be very complex, emotions, yeah. thoughts, uh, trauma, uh, our wounds, our pain, relationships, it can get very confusing inside of us. And so what the primal question does is, is it takes all of that stuff, all that psychology, all that human psychology, and takes it down into a really simple concept that... Uh, helps us understand what drives us, mm. helps us understand the emotional control center of our lives. And then once we see what's going on inside of us, it really empowers us to, to take the next step towards health and healing. Yeah. So I have to ask you a question up front. There's seven of them. Mm -hmm. There are nine Enneagram types. And there yes. feels like a lot of, like, as I was reading the book, I was like, yeah, this has some, it smells a little bit of Enneagram in a good mm. way. You know me, I'm an Enneagram. I mean, oh, yeah, the me good too. news is all the, all the people that chirp about Enneagram about did the devil write it or did God write it? We're like, Mike Foster <laughs> wrote the seven primal questions. So you can feel fine about this. There is no and question. Mike is not God or yeah, the devil. Yeah, I tell so that. guess yeah. what? As, as innocent as the Enneagram actually is, so is the seven primal questions. Yes. But so, so talk, about that I mean where's the similarity here where's the difference because they it does feel like some of the paths could feel similar yes well and I love the Enneagram too uh but I, but full confession I find for at least for my world I find the Enneagram to be a bit too complicated sometimes and yeah. it's such so much going on that I get a little confused yeah 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 uh, and I've been saying the thing for a while uh, so the thing that I like about primal questions is it, it really is simple it's like one thing. And if we yeah. can know that one thing, we can see how it informs everything. Yep. Also, I think my when I'm writing, you know, when I was writing the book, when I'm coaching people, I'm doing workshops, I'm all about let's equip people to do something with what we have learned or what we know. Yeah. It's like yeah. empower action. And so one of the things I think is really uh, not that the Enneagram doesn't empower action, but the seven primal questions is all about Okay, now that you know this, mm -hmm. go do this. Yes. These are yes. your next steps. These are your action items. Yes. So as we are thinking about this year, Mike, as I'm going into 2024, so I, I want us to go over the questions. I took the quiz, primalquestions.com. Is that right? Or primal primalquestion.com. Question. Yep. Primalquestion.com. So if y'all are listening and you want to, or watching and you want to pause right now and go to primalquestion.com so that you can know. I mean, I took it and I was like, um, exposed immediately. Mm. So I want us to talk about those. But as we're going yes. into 2024, talk to me about why does it help to know the, the central question that you are asking the world? Why does that help us this year? Well, really what that central question represents, the primal question represents, is your highest emotional need. Mm. So 
And why is, why is that important? Because when that need is unmet, it drives all kinds of feelings, emotions, and thoughts, and then drives all kinds of behaviors, choices, and actions. Oh, wow. And so if you don't understand like the core of who you are, and, and here's, here's kind of a simple way to say it. When your primal question is answered with a yes, you're going to thrive flourish. Yes. You're going to yes. feel good. You're going to be your best self. But when that primal question, that emotional need, it, it gets answered with a no, then you go into what I call the scramble. I write about this in the book. And oh, this the is scramble's all the brilliant. Unhelpful things we do to try to force the answer back to a yes. Yeah. People pleasing, perfectionism, abandoning ourselves, just all the things that we do that we don't have to do that really mm -hmm. actually undermine our lives when we can really learn to actually answer our own question with a yes. And, and honestly, Annie, to know that God answers that question with a yes. And so we no longer have to live in the scramble. I tell people, there's nothing wrong with having a primal question. What's wrong is living in the scramble and having yes. that primal question control our lives. Yeah, that's so good. As I read about the scramble, I was like, Mike Foster, that is the perfect word because that is what I do. When I mm. get a no to my primal question, I am scrambling. I am suddenly yes. high level alert to make myself feel better as quick as possible. Right. Yes. And so whether that's and for my personality type, for my Enneagram sevenness, it is escape. Like, go do something. Get out of here. Don't, you know, yes. either escape inward or escape to food or escape to Dollywood or escape to a friend's house or whatever. Right. Escape to Instagram. And so, man, just having that language when I'm going into this year and working on like emotional health, physical health and spiritual health. If I'm thinking about my emotional health, I'm like. Maybe one of the biggest wins, Mike, is when we can identify our own scrambling, right? Yes, absolutely. And that's that's a big part of the action item is for you to have language to identify what's going on inside of you. It's like, oh, yeah. I just got a no to my primal question. Oh, my highest emotional need was just squashed and unmet in that conversation yes. I had with my friend or my boss or my spouse or whatever it's happening. And now I'm reacting to that. And yeah. so what the kind of the second part of the book, I write about this whole concept of self-leadership. It's yeah. really about, we are going to be activated. We are going to get nose to our primal question, but what do we do then? Well, we step in and we lead ourselves through that. We remind ourselves that we're going to be okay, that, you know, we, that, that we can answer our own question with a yes in that moment yeah. instead of being controlled by other people's answers to that question. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, will you go through the seven questions? Yes. And I can't wait to hear what yours is. I I'm mean, sure. I, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to guess or not, but we'll talk about it. I, yeah, well, Liz, I'm going to just have you have you share because okay. I think that's that's awesome. But by the way, think about it. As I go through these seven questions, I'll go through them pretty, pretty quickly. All of the seven questions represent an emotional need. Now, all of us are going to have parts of these questions yeah. within us, but there's one that's driving the ship. There's one yeah. that says, okay, like this is what, you know, is really the filter of how I see my life, of who I am, the really kind of number one priority in terms of my emotional needs. And again, Annie, all of this gets imprinted in our early childhood. And we can talk about that more later, but it's something that we've carried pretty much all of our lives. Is any of it nature or is it all nurture? You know, uh, most of it's about what we experience okay. and really the confusion as we're these kids soaking up, you know, the rules of life and what yeah. love and security and success and purpose look like. We're learning all these lessons that, as kids. And there's something that's being, that's confusing that we're learning from our caretakers. Yeah. So maybe we're feeling unloved or we're not feeling safe or whatever it is. And so we then carry this question into our adulthood and we keep asking it. So all yeah. seven, we're going to have parts of all seven, but there's one that definitely is, is our question. So you can do yeah. the assessment. You can do, I, I do this with clients, you know, it takes about 20 minutes to at, we explore different parts. But what's interesting is sometimes when I just go through the seven questions, people go, boom, that's mine. Yeah. Because they've been carrying that. It's like gives language to the thing that they have felt their entire life. Yeah. So yeah. let me go through these real quick for you. And then we'll talk a little bit more. So question number one is, am I safe? 
And this is really the need for physical and emotional safety. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who have this question experience trauma in their early lives, uh, a chaotic family, an unsafe family. Uh, there was just not this foundation of safety for that person. So they grow up and they keep asking this question, am I safe, am I safe, am I safe? And when they get a yes, they feel good. But uh -huh. when they get a no or a maybe, they go into their scramble. By the way, this is my question wow. Uh, wow. that I work with every single day where wow. my uh, I had abuse in my early childhood uh, by a family friend. And so safety was something that wasn't in my childhood. It just, yeah. I never felt safe. And so now I grow up as an adult and I run, I am risk averse. I don't do anything where I might get hurt. Um, I am, I am, I, am, I want to know everything. I'm hyper vigilant with details. And this is all driven by my primal question. But here's the, also the good thing. And as we're going through this, um, every question has a gift associated with it. Wow. So one of the things the research shows, Annie, is that we take our own primal question oh, and right. we put it over everybody else and assume they're asking the same question. And we want them to get a yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So why do people open up and tell Mike Foster their deepest, darkest secrets on Fun <laughs> right. Therapy Podcast? Because you feel safe. You feel safe to do that. Dude, this is exactly. my... And so it's your fault that I did that. Now I understand. <laughs> now I understand. It's because you were answering your primal question over me. Exactly. I wow. wanted you to feel safe and protected, wow. and which created this atmosphere for us to have those really vulnerable conversations. So that's a gift that comes through really yeah. a lot of pain that I experienced in my early childhood. Like this is what I love about God, right? He takes all this sort of messy, uh, painful wounding of our childhood yeah. and he can redeem it and really give us this amazing superpower. Yeah. So question one, am I safe? Question two is, am I secure? Which has to do really about financial security. This is where perhaps you grew up in a home where there wasn't a lot of resourcing or our money was tight or mom and dad were always worried about bills. Uh, it just always felt like there wasn't enough. And so really the main emotional need that you have is financial security. And when you have that financial security, you feel great. But yeah. man, if that bank account's getting a little bit too low, um, you're feeling like uh, you can't afford life, you go into your scramble and you start yeah. going to really uh, unhelpful coping mechanisms for yeah. that question. So um, by the way, my favorite person on this question is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh -huh. So if you, if you think about Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I've seen him interviewed a lot about this. His primal question would be, am I secure? So the thing that d drives Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you know, biggest celebrity, superstar. Yeah is not fame, okay? It's not success. It's not him to be uh, adorned by, by other people. It is his need for financial security. Wow. And you see this in his story, like he grew up kind of, his dad was a wrestler, so money was pretty tight. He talks openly about kind of them not knowing if they can pay their bills. Mm -hmm. He named his production company Seven Bucks Productions because it's all around like he was down to his last seven bucks wow. in his pocket when he made the decision to really, uh, you know, kind of become what Gosh. he is today. And so it's really fun watching people talk about their needs, talk about their story, talk about what drives them. And you can see the question that they're trying to answer mm -hmm. in their in, in what they share. So wow. am I secure is really just around when he gets a yes, he's feeling great. When he gets a no, he, he scrambles and he goes yeah. into all those yeah. mechanisms that he uses to help him meet that need for security. So, sorry, let me interrupt you and ask you an overarching yes. question before we go to number three. Is there ever enough money? Is there ever enough safety? Is there ever, like, do you ever hit the, okay, I'm satisfied now? Such a great question. So, like, one of the things I write about in the book is that math is no match for emotions. Yeah. Okay. So, I have a client that I work with. 50, he flies in on his $50 million jet. Uh, he's probably worth... $500 million. His primal question is, am I secure? So he is constantly feels like he doesn't have enough. My so primal really question is, is he married? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yes, he is. <laughs> okay, great. Congratulations to them. Great. <laughs> um, but he, that's such a great question. Um, uh, the uh, So his 
So the work that we do together is help him understand that there is this kind of core driver, this need for financial security in his life. And there's nothing wrong with that need, by the way. We don't judge any of these needs. It's just, it's there, let's deal with it, okay? Yeah, yeah. And so kind of the prescription for our primal question is to stop asking the question and start living in what I call the primal truth. And it's mm. that's where we take our question and turn into a statement. So instead of asking, am I secure or am I safe? We turn it into a statement. I am secure. Yeah, I am wow. safe. And then we make our choices and our decisions for our life. Yeah. But as long as we're living in that question, it's going to send us on a path that is not going to be beneficial to our lives. Um, we have this button that we push called the Wowie Zowie button. Whenever somebody blows my mind and that's it, the, 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 the primal <laughs> truth, turning it to I yes. am secure, like it, it, right. it becomes not about your circumstances, but about what is true. And that's so exactly that's right. beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, in any, a lot of this is because what we're bringing to our adult lives is our child logic. Yeah. Okay. We're allowing our wounded child to uh, analyze our life as an adult See, it's still like my friend who's worth $500 million, right? He, when he wonders if he has enough, he's going back to the, his, the home that he grew up and when that didn't have enough, okay? Yeah, yeah. Where, where poverty was a real thing. And so he's bringing this wounded child now into his adult life to make his adult decisions instead of living in the primal truth. Like for me, I, I didn't feel safe as a kid, Okay. But I can remind myself now, and I actually do this. I remind myself I'm 6'4", mm -hmm. 220 pounds, and I live in a suburb of San Diego. Okay? <laughs> I'm pretty safe, all right? Right, right. I got friends who got my back. I got resources to protect myself. I have a voice. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a voice as a wounded child, yeah. okay? I have a voice now that I can use. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's this whole idea of the primal truth is like we can live in that very empowered place Instead of allowing this question to drive our lives, am I safe? Yeah. Am I secure? Yeah. We, we can now say, I am. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I have one other amazing partner to tell you about, Ritual. Did you know 97% of women ages 19 to 50 are not getting enough vitamin D from their diet? The shorter days right now mean we need to work just a little bit harder to get some vitamin D in there too. But Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% in a clinical study. It is made with high quality ingredients and nine traceable key nutrients. So you just take two capsules a day and their capsule has this delayed release design to help make it gentle on your neck empty stomach, which I think is awesome. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus has this minty essence in every bottle to help keep things fresh. Y'all know I'm a fan of that. And it helps make taking multivitamins every day actually enjoyable. Plus, it's also soy-free, gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and formulated without GMOs. And it's USP verified, which means the product contains the ingredients actually listed on the label. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 40% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash that sounds fun. This offer is only available through January 31st. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash that sounds fun for 40% off. Okay, now back to our conversation with Mike. That sounds fun. Okay, question three. Keep us going. Okay, am I loved? Question three, and this is really just the need to be known and seen and heard. I, Adele's primal question, am I loved? Oh, you wow. look at everything that Adele sings about, you look at her relationships, how she makes people feel, like yeah. you, she loves her audience, right? She wants to be connected yes. to people. She wants to know them and be friends and 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 can, just, you, you look at her lyrics that she sings about, it's all about love, okay? So this is again, her highest emotional need is being expressed in 
everything that she does. It's both yeah. her gifting, but also the thing that she has to to manage, like because she's going to get some nose to that. In fact, she just yeah. went through a divorce a couple years ago, and she talks about that as being the most devastating moment of her life. Mm -hmm. She talked about going to therapy every single day to wow. get through that because her primal question of am I loved was being answered with a big fat no, right? right, right. And that just sent her into her scramble. Right. Wow. Okay. Okay. Question four, am I wanted? This is Bob Goff's primal question, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the kind of examples I'd use with this question, this is really the need to be included, to be wanted, belonging, um, and you see Bob's primal gift in a really clear way because he takes his question, am I wanted? He puts it over Annie, he puts it over Mike, he puts it over every person that he ever meets, yeah. right? And he's like, your best friend, okay? Yep. You're included and Bob wants to answer, yes, you're wanted. And this is because Bob experienced a lot of rejection mm -hmm. in his life, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Bob shared with me and he's actually shared openly is that one of the reasons why he feels like he has to be the fun guy or the 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 balloon guy or the happy guy is because that's that's in many ways a coping mechanism to be included mm. that you're going to want somebody like that with you or you want to be around somebody like that. Yeah. You also look at Bob. Bob's the only guy that I know has put his cell phone in the back of his book. Jeez. It was and wild. said call me. Why does he do that? Because yeah. His primal question, every time he gets a phone call, his primal question of am I wanted is answered with a yes, okay? Yeah, yeah. But it's also communicating to everybody out there that you're wanted, that I care yeah. about you, yeah. that you're my friend. So yeah. it's really fun when we look, we understand the question, we, uh, we can start seeing it in almost everything yeah. that we do and how yeah. we think and how we act. So totally. um, question five, am I successful? I'll go faster here. No, am no, I no, successful? no, this, this is, is great. Really Okay, I, I feel like I'm uh, sometimes like, I mean, I could just talk about one question for like an hour, but right, right. Um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, the uh, question five, am I successful? This is really about typically people who grew up in competitive homes where, mm -hmm. where it's about kind of scorekeeping and maybe it was sibling rivalry or maybe mom and dad were really concerned about grades and being excellent and winning. I always kind of describe this as, you know, did you win the when you won the baseball game at your little league game and dad was really talkative to you and he was really proud of you and he was really kind of jazzed and you were experiencing that in the ride home in the car. And then when you lost or didn't play well, maybe it was a lot quieter. Maybe yeah. you felt sort of like dad wasn't proud of you anymore. Wasn't that excited that, that you were his son or his daughter. The, and again, none of this, we, this is about blaming parents. This right. is about some of the confusion that happens in our lives where we then carry the question going, well, in order for me to be, I have to be successful. Yes. And yes. when I'm successful, then I'm a good person. I'm, I'm dad's going to like me if I win, uh, versus when I'm not, when I fail, mm -hmm. I again go into my scramble. So this is, yeah. they tend to be very competitive people and it's about winning. Um, question six, am I good enough? This is a big one. This is the one we see a lot uh, show up in the assessment. Oh, wow. Is really this need to feel um, worthy, right? To be affirmed, having their unique humanity valued and recognized. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times this question gets implanted in early childhood when you grew up in a kind of a very critical home, a, a judgmental home where it was never quite enough. Like you did your best, but it's like, oh, you could have done better. You, you, maybe a, your mom nitpicked your, your wardrobe or your hairstyle or whatever. You know, it's like maybe, maybe dad was really critical to calling you, you know, you're, you're lazy or, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're not really good. These messages get seared into our our emotional uh, system. And we we carry that now into, uh, again, our adulthood. And so these people struggle with a lot of insecurity mm -hmm. and often a lot of shame, just feeling like I am inherently flawed. Yeah. I will never measure up. And again, mm -hmm. the gift that comes out of that is these people are amazing value creators because they know they're, they have a PhD in value. They know right. how to get value and be value because they they understand this idea of being good enough. Yeah. And so they tend to be very high performers. 
Uh, sometimes that's because of their perfectionistic tendencies. Yeah. Uh, th- but they're they're excellent at what they do because they're working so hard to get that yes to say yeah. yes, you are yeah. good enough, and right. to avoid that no. Right. And then the final question, and then I can't wait to hear what Annie's question <laughs> is, um, is question seven, do I have a purpose? And you know what's interesting, Annie, on this one is that a, a lot of the research shows that people who grew up in faith-based homes have this question. Interesting. Because I, think, I think what happened is these homes, we talk about making an impact, making uh, a difference in the world, like God's got a great plan and calling on your life. And so these are the conversations that are happening at the dinner table with mom and dad. And so now there's this kind of this sense and this pressure, like to have a purpose, right? To have a a big impact. And, And so really the emotional need here is to have significance in your life, to have meaningful wow. work, to make an impact, to be part of something bigger than themselves. And what happens is when that, when you get a no, like maybe you're just, I don't know, maybe you're a manager at a car dealership. You're yeah. like, well, what difference does this make? This doesn't have any impact. I'm not changing the world here. And so they deal with a lot of calling angst. Wow. Where they feel like, Is this enough? Am I, Mm -hmm. and they're just always very judgmental towards themselves and their position in life. And really, instead of saying, hey, whatever I'm doing every day, whether it's uh, being a parent to my child, being a good friend, encouraging others, that kind of work is full of purpose too. It doesn't mean we have to be over in Africa saving a country. Right, right, right. Wow. I mean, these seven are, I'm, I'm glad everyone got to hear them. Again, I, Dear everyone listening, please, or watching, please pause and go take this quiz so that you can know, because I want us to dive deeper into some of them. But again, it's primalquestion.com is where they can go. Yep. And it's a free quiz. Takes about five minutes. And yeah. You, it was very know. easy. I tried to take it. I tried to not, and I think the first question says this, or the pre pet question page says, don't think too long. Like go, yes. like just answer. You yes. don't have to, you know, don't sit on this. So I kind of like, I very Annie, I went definitely disagree. Definitely agree. <laughs> definitely. I mean, I like <laughs> threw the thing all the way down and all the way up. Okay, That's Mike. Awesome. So my primal question is question four. Am I wanted? Yes, totally. I know. Me and I just Bob Goff. Give you a big we hug are, right now. I know. I, I know. I want, listen, Annie, that is set. Can I just, I want to encourage you on that. Okay. Here's the okay. thing. You really... And this is why, you know, I love you so much, why I love Bob so much, because you, you have, you know, your primal gift is so clear. Anybody listening to this right now can see like, of course, that is the filter of how she does everything. <laughs> everything. Okay? Right. I know. And the reason why, and it's such a gift that you give to other people to let them into your lives that, I mean, everybody, you're everybody's friend. Right. Yeah. Whether you know them or not, but that's because you want to say yes, that they're wanted, that they're yes. included. You don't want anybody left out. You're probably, you know, one of the things I love about this question is they tend to look, look for the outsider, the person that mm. is kind of on the periphery and they have a heart for those people. It's yeah. a very powerful, like beautiful gift that you have, but it all stems from your own emotional need yeah. to feel wanted and to be long and to be totally. pursued. That pursued's a big word in that, that I write about this in the book, the idea that somebody g- comes after me, right? Yeah. That yeah. wants me. That's such a, that is a yeah. big yes for a question for, am I wanted? Yeah, it's wild. You know, one of the, I, I, so ever since I took the quiz yesterday, I have, filtered everything. I've been like, oh, that's it. Oh, that's why I do. Oh, that's why I do that. I do that. We did, um, we had a series we did for Advent and we had a guidebook and we had it in English, of course. And then I thought we need it in Spanish. We need it in Spanish. So we spent a thousand dollars to get it translated. We sold five, five. I mean, we, the, the, the ROI was invisible except to me. Where I'm like, great, right. great. That means it exists forever. That means five people who couldn't do this got to do it. I mean, like, we didn't sell no 10,000. No one, yeah. If anyone spoke Spanish and any per chance wanted to be a part of this at Christmas, we had a way. Only yes. five people took advantage of that, but that still met my need. Do you know what I mean? Like, I still feel in my core like they felt anyone who speaks Spanish felt wanted. Yes. 
And so not so everyone on my team has the same question. So not everyone has no. the same value. But but for me, I went like, great, perfect. I, I, I love that. That is. And so, I, I mean, I have saw I've seen it in. It's been really funny, Mike, because for a couple of weeks I've been at. I don't ever look at my Instagram numbers. It does not serve. It does not help. There's bots everywhere. You can't know. But when you're switching between 263,000 and 264,000, you notice the three and four, right? And so for weeks, I jumped back and forth and it was torturing me. And I was mm. saying to someone over the Christmas break, why do I care? I do not care about this ever. Well, here's why I care, because I'm always asking if I'm wanted. And yes. so whereas normally I can, um, I can quiet that particular noise because I'm able to put it in its right place, mm -hmm. when it is sitting on a ledge like that, it gets very loud to me because it's answering my primal question every day. I'm going from yes, yes to no every day. Exactly. Okay. And that, that, I mean, that is what's, I always say like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. I know. And so you're going to, you're going to discover all kinds of things in your life, Annie, in terms of the choices that you make, the things that bother you, the things that trigger you. And, and that's such a great example of why we live in our primal truth, because you don't want to uh, have Instagram numbers answering uh, your primal question. No, of course not. Oh, my gosh. Of course not. Right. Of course. Because it don't. goes. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Constantly. No. Constantly. <laughs> constantly. Yes. I mean, and, and it overly explains why the Internet has mattered too much to me and why yeah. I have to deal with I need thicker skin and I need to be OK when people are unhappy with me. I've never I've always called it immaturity in me. And what it actually is, is it is the Instagram is particularly triggering for my primal question. <laughs> Yes, it is. Well, one of the things I talk about in the book is every primal question has what I call kryptonite. And the kryptonite right. is really the thing that will instantly send you into your scramble. Yeah. And for question four is, am I wanted? Rejection is the kryptonite. Yeah. Okay? Rejection and that's not is true the thing for that, everybody? That shocks me. No. It's, it's not true for me. me. I mean, I don't like, here's, I don't like to be rejected, yeah. but my deal is safety. Okay. Yeah. So if I feel for me, like any, don't throw Mike Foster a surprise party. Okay. Right. Cause I don't want any surprises. I don't right. want anything that I can't predict or understand or know exactly yeah. what to do in any uh, situation. Yeah. And that's also the kind of the, the interesting thing about your question that gives you some new, a, an additional gift, not only the gift of making everybody feel wanted, but it also means that these other questions aren't as powerful in your life or these other needs yeah. are not as powerful. So like for me, I'm a bit, I guess, inoculated against rejection because I'm dealing with safety over here. Yeah, and I don't right. really care, care that much about my purpose. Like if I have a legacy, right. great. If I don't, no big deal. Oh yeah, that so, question I was like, uh, no, I don't, no, I don't care. Totally. But there are people who that is their like center core Absolutely. thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And so it's we got to understand that. We got to understand that center core thing right. so we can understand ourselves and then make better choices and decisions and really kind of know what's going on inside of us. I mean, that's, yeah. a, we can't, we can't come up with solutions or cures if we don't know what the problem is. And so yes. this is just like helps people identify what's going on inside of them. Yes. I think it's really important that our friends listening here that that the primal question is not just about your friendships. It's not just about your romantic life. It's not just about your work. It's everywhere. And I think what's really important here, Annie, is that this isn't just an affirmation that we say over ourselves. is isn't sort of just kind of words or kind of like this new age sort of not thing. Not a mantra. This yeah. is, it's not a mantra. It is actually inviting ourselves into like radical truth. Yeah. You are wanted no matter what is happening around you or what somebody might do or say or the rejection you might get in a particular interaction you can go back to this really rock solid place to know that i am wanted period yeah yeah and it makes me show up a more authentic version of me because i'm not yes. scared right well, you're no longer having the pressure or the responsibility to manage the question anymore. You're released mm. from that work. Yeah. And you can actually show up sort of this confidence, um, 
you know, knowing that you're living in your primal truth, I am wanted. And so it gives you this great resilience and strength and clarity. And that, that fundamentally is your true self. That's also, yeah. you, it's not the wounded child showing up to that interaction with that, yeah. that individual. It's the healthy adult Annie saying, I'm leading myself well around a really key emotional need that I have, but yeah. I get to be in charge of it, not the everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt like me and the Lord kind of, um, this is wild, but this is what your work does. I felt like me and the Lord understood each other better. Yes. Yeah. I, well, you know what, what I say to people is our relationship with God is directly uh, connected to our primal question. And basically, I believe this is my theology, is that God is trying to interact with you and and answer with the biggest yes possible around our primal wow. question. Wow. So like for me, the, the the Bible verses that mean so much to me is is God being my protector, my refuge, um, my my the the person who reminds me that everything's gonna be okay. Your relation, like the message that God's trying to get to Annie F. Downs yeah. is you belong. I pursue yeah. you, I want relationship with you. Yeah. And that's you know, if your question is question seven, do you have a purpose? God's saying, yes, you have a purpose. I have a great plan for your life. And so like his interaction with us is he knows what our deepest emotional need yeah. is. He knows our primal question and he wants to answer yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, all day long. That's how it's felt. I mean, it has shifted me, out, uh, friendship, romantic work and all those ways. But just between me and the Lord in the last two days, I've been like, oh, that's why it always matters so much when I see that or when you say that or, you know, I was like, oh, that's why is because my primal question is being answered with a divine yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. That's, that's exactly right. And that's it's fantastic. And that's what I love about again, I I, I love the, the the framework. I love teaching people the framework. I love doing the assessment with people. But the great thing is it's like this this new sense of clarity yeah. and and just this like gusto to like, okay, now I know what's going on. I know what to do. Let's get after it. And yeah. instead of being kind of hindered or held back or, you know, getting down on ourselves for feeling certain things or, you know, why do I always get triggered by this? Now yeah. we know and we can do something about it. I mean, it is. I feel like I want to tattoo on myself. Don't scramble. Don't scramble. <laughs> no need to scramble. <laughs> Hey friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to share about one of our amazing partners, Haya Health. This one's for my mini BFFs. Listen, I know you may not love taking your vitamins, but Haya Health is a good one. So parents, if you're looking for a children's vitamin that both tastes good and doesn't have a bunch of junk in it, check out Haya Health. A lot of children's vitamins end up having unnecessary sugar and unhealthy chemicals in them. So Haya was created so you can feel good about what you're given to my mini BFFs. Haya isn't candy in disguise. Instead, it's pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then filled with 15 essential vitamins and minerals. Plus, your first shipment comes with these cute little stickers for your kids to stick on the bottles, and Haya is also sent straight to your door, so you don't have to remember to add it to your grocery list. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order, you guys, 50%. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash that sounds fun. That's H-I-Y-A H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash that sounds fun and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. And one more amazing partner to tell you about Liquid IV. If you're trying to stay more hydrated this year, Liquid IV will come to the rescue. And you guys know we love that stuff around here. You don't need to reinvent yourself for the new year. Just revive yourself with Liquid IV. It has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone. And it's all in a single sugar-free stick. So you can feel hydrated, revived, and ready to take on 2024. That one 
the little stick, you just dump it into your water bottle. And now the hydration multiplier comes in these three really good sugar-free flavors, the white peach, the green grape, and the lemon lime. There's no artificial sweetener, zero sugar, and it's also non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Revive yourself for the new year. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free and bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code that sounds fun at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code that sounds fun at liquidiv.com. And now back to finish up our conversation with Mike. Okay, let me ask you one more question for because I yes. selfishly I get to do that because it's you and me sitting here, and then we'll kind of wrap up. But I, a thought I have about my particular question about am I wanted and me is is my fear and my scramble one of the reasons that I am so um, averse to men pursuing me is because it's actually what I really want the most. Yes. Yeah, because I You're block, I like, I I rush, I rush too quick, but I'm not, but I'm rushing because I want to cut off the chance of them not doing it, right? Yeah. Well, one of the yeah. things I, I write in, write about in the book is this concept called primal avoidance. Uh -huh. And what that is, is where we take our primal question and we actually take it off the table. Yeah. We no longer ask it because it's a protection mechanism, Right. Right. It's a way that we don't risk getting a no or a maybe to our primal question. So we just take it off the table. And this isn't about living in your primal truth. This is actually the unhealthy uh, response where we we pull it pull it off the table. We avoid, at, you know, we're just shut down. And so that protects us from getting those no's or maybes. And yeah. so when you think about kind of putting yourself out there, okay, you, you know, live in that place of primal truth, knowing that like, it's okay. There are going to be people in your life who are going to say no to your yeah. question. Okay? Yeah. And that's okay. And that's okay. Because you know, and you remind yourself, well, I am wanted. Okay. Yeah. And just like for me, I know there are people who will make me feel unsafe. There will be people that uh, will really rattle my 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 snow globe and I'll get all all yeah. and I understand that but I don't have to live in sort of this again the child logic place I can be an adult about it and say okay that's one person's opinion that's yeah. one person's rejection of me that's not er not everybody's rejecting me or everybody's going to reject me so yes and I think for you in in terms of the romantic relationship side it is your most vulnerable place. So you're going to be very, very cautious and protective of it because it does have the most potency to wound you yeah. if you're not if you keep asking the question versus if you're living in that place of primal truth, then its power is really depleted. It doesn't yeah. have that same control over you. And then it actually just gets to be, and then when the power is depleted, I actually get the yes. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's be, the wild because part. you're showing you're showing up as your your best self. You're showing yeah. up as your true self instead of this person that's managing this question and trying to get a response. You, you're trying to get a yes from everybody, right? Yes. Because you go on these dates and you connect with these different perhaps suitors, and you want to get the yes, but that's not your true self. Yeah, you're, you're managing a question. Yeah. Instead of just showing up going, I am wanted. You're lucky to have me. You're lucky that I'm yes. even here right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or going like, I'm wanted. Are you interested in being one of the people who wants me? Like, are you? Yeah, there, do you exactly. Uh, because oh my gosh, you can say so no, good. but that doesn't leave me without being wanted. That just leaves me without you wanting me. So I will have exactly. feelings around you not wanting me, but I will not be unwanted over it. And I think yes. eight year ago, Annie, 10 year ago, Annie would have gone, if you don't want me, I'm unwanted. And now my sentence is, if you don't want me, you don't want me. That's it. That's it. If you that's don't want me, right. you don't want me. And that doesn't mean I'm unwanted. And so I think that's the switch I'm experiencing. You're giving me language for a switch that I've experienced in the last few months that I have not known before. Mm -hmm. I love that. So That's fun. This is good. I just want to give you a hug. That's uh, so good, no, it's so, Well, I'm so thankful for you because now I'm like, man, I am a tornado on my worst days. To Annie of 2013, I am a tornado of unhealthy Enneagram 7, 
are am I wanted and anxious attachment. I'm just a tornado of it. And so God bless everybody I knew in 2013 who experienced that. But now I'm like, oh, there are gifts to all of these. Like there's even a gift to the anxious attachment because it means I want to be connected to you now, but I have to manage it. Right. So, so all of these, it just feels like the primal questions. These seven questions are giving me language. I'm like, man, I need everybody on our staff to take it. I need everyone I'm ever going to date to take it. I need my parents, my siblings to take it. Like, I just want to know everyone's question. Absolutely. Well, I, I always say this for couples. Uh, I do a lot of couples counseling. Yeah. And I, I, I tell them that basically the reason why you have conflict or the reason why this relationship is failing or not working is because you are answering your spouse's primal question with a no or a maybe. And mm-hmm. once that they have the language like, how do I answer my spouse's question with a yes? Yeah the relationship starts to work. It's not more date nights. It's not about money problems. It's not about sex. It's about you're not answering your spouse's primal question with a yes. And there is no relationship that will succeed if the person in that relationship is keeps getting a no to their primal question. And that's true for romantic relationships, work relationships, friendships. I can't be in relationship with somebody who makes me feel constantly makes me feel unsafe. Okay. Yeah, I can't yeah. work for somebody who constantly makes me feel unsafe. You know, just right. like you, you can't, you can't be friends with somebody who constantly sort of, uh, is aloof to being with you or doesn't no. you know, kind of re- reject you or just like, yeah, I'll take it or leave it. Like that relationship no. won't work because they're giving you a no or maybe, and that doesn't yeah. make them a bad person, but it just shows the power of that need with you, within you and within me yeah. and with everybody who's listening that we've got to like be aware of it. We got to communicate that to are key people. Like yeah. this is this is important to me. It's like your team members, they need to know like why did you do the Spanish version? Yeah. Because you want everyone to belong. You want everybody yeah. to be included. That's the way Annie works, okay? Yeah. They need to know yeah. that about you. Uh, okay, so what do we do now, Mike? We've taken our assessment. We know our our question. What is our next move to continue to pursue like emotional health in this? Yeah. Well, um, one of the things I do in the book is I, I talk about this primal map and the oh, primal map is really just about building out kind of all the different implications of how this question is impacting Can I show your this? life. Sure. If they're yeah. watching on video, there it is. And does every number have the same map? Every number has the same map, but okay. what it is, it's, it's an exercise where you can, can identify your primal gift and what does that yeah. look like and what are the different areas you can identify what is your scramble look like so when you notice like when i start getting very hyper vigilant or catastrophic thinking i'm like oh i know what's going on here yeah. my primal question of am i safe was answered with a no oh yeah am i, I in leave. line at the dairy queen i have scrambled i have scrambled <laughs> it's not a dairy queen problem it's why is annie at dairy queen i've scrambled Exactly. And so like the, the map gives us this opportunity to, to kind of identify those things. Yeah. So we understand what's really going on here. So we can get back to really that that healthy adult place of living in our primal truth. Um, so that that's a big kind of easy tool of just kind of seeing the different implications of both positive and negative. And it really gives us this, this great launching point to, to live our lives to, to the maximum and really flourish uh, in our relationships, at work, and obviously in our personal lives. Yeah. And there's coaching available, right? So if we're like, I got to go next level on this, coaching's available at primalquestion.com. Yeah, there's really two options. So on, at our website, we you can do the assessment and get a get a coach. But the other thing is I and this is the most fun thing I'm doing right now, Annie, is I'm training coaches, counselors, Great. therapists, yes. pastors, other leaders how to use this framework to help people kind of have that aha moment and understand what's going on mm-hmm. inside of them so that they can really begin to to grow and flourish in their lives. And so I I I, every every Monday, I'm training 80 to 100 people in this cool. framework, and so it's a certification process. It's it's fantastic, and so like it's the really really deep dive into this yeah. this process. But it's a great great way to understand not only for you, but then to help others yeah. uh, within your team or who you're coaching or counseling. Yeah. 
great. Okay, so, and the book's available everywhere, right? Like, we can go on Amazon, we can get it anywhere we want it. It's Amaz- Amazon's the best place. Great. And okay. I always say, if you go to Amazon, leave a review. That is probably the yes. greatest gift you can give an author. Is That's just right. leave a little review if you That's like right. the book. If you don't like the book, don't leave a review. Don't leave a review. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's I mean, that is so true. Even if, yeah, so, so they can go right now, Amazon, get the book, and go yep. take Primal Question quiz at primalquestion.com. Uh, you have yep. so many video resources. I mean, it really is a course in humaning, you know, and like being a good human. And so I am, um, I, I'm about to become a, quite the evangelist, Mike, because I'm like, this Aww. has answered my questions. <laughs> this is like That's my next, awesome. this is my next growth place. I think, I mean, I really can, while I see growth, I also see room to grow. Right. And so I am, uh, man, I'm really grateful. I can't wait for people to get get about this. How can they get in touch with you, Mike? Yeah, I, again, primalquestion.com is a great place. There's contact information there. Um, you know, I speak, I do workshops on this. Um, Instagram's great too. Like I'm Mike, yeah, I'm Mike so Foster good. 2000, the number 2000. I'm posting different videos about emotional health and yeah. the primal question. And sometimes pictures of my my two Pomeranians that- uh, yeah. Uh, that are my fur babies. I I post those on Instagram too, but- uh, And you celebrate your life all the time on Instagram. I love it. I do. We've been married uh, almost 30 years now. And um, we're, uh, man, and by the way, the Primal Question has really helped our marriage in a big way. Like, oh my gosh. We, we finally have cracked the code on how yeah. to connect with each other. And we've, we've done a pretty good job up to the, to knowing the Primal Question. Yeah. But this is just kind of, taking it to the next level, which yeah. has been fun and exciting too for, for uh, marriage. I'm so grateful, Mike. Thank you for making time to do this today. You are such a gift. And I, I just, I can't wait for people to get going on their primal question. Yes. Well, thanks, Annie. You're you're just, and I, I love uh, just everything about who you are and how your Q4, your question, am I wanted, gets expressed in the world. We are all beneficiaries of you letting us belong in your world and be your friend. And so thank you for just being you. And thanks for for letting me uh, uh, talk about this uh, concept today. You're very kind. Thank you, my friend. Oh, you guys, isn't he great? Wasn't that awesome? Oh my gosh, these seven questions. Like when I tell you, it is all I have thought about. Oh my gosh. I mean, it is like, it is telling me something right now about ways I can keep growing. So remember, you can go take that assessment at primalquestion.com. All the resources there. You can grab a copy of the seven primal questions on Amazon. You're going to want that book to look through to get that map that he talked about. You're going to want all that. And listen, reading the other six questions was very helpful to me as well. So did you see me do that math real quick in my head? But I, I really want y'all to... Um, Try this. Just go take the assessment. See what you think. And then go follow Mike on social media. Tell him thanks again for being on the show. I can't believe it was his first time. It will not be his last. And don't forget, all of this year's episodes are now available to watch on YouTube. And if you didn't hear the other big news, I've got a new guided journal coming out on March 5th called Let's Read the Gospels. Y'all, it is so beautiful. Yes, it's based on the podcast. It's a 30-day guided journal featuring a new Bible reading plan that we have never done before. And so we are going to do that in April on Let's Read the Gospels. It's a beautiful book. I cannot wait for us all to go through it together in April. So go pre-order your copy right now, wherever you love to buy books, wherever you're picking up the seven primal questions, get you some copies of the Let's Read the Gospels guided journal as well. If you have any questions from this episode, drop them in the Q&A box on your Spotify app if you're a Spotify listener or send them to us on Instagram at That Sounds Fun Podcast. We'll try to answer them there. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Annie F. Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, in Rwanda, Africa currently, you guys. So anywhere you need me, that's how you can find me. I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out, do something that sounds fun to you, and I will do the same. And today, what sounds fun to me, I cannot know. I'm in Rwanda. That sounds fun to me. I'm doing something fun today, that's for sure. Make sure you're checking in with me and Carlos and our team on our socials as we get to share more and more with you about the work of Africa New Life. I am so excited, so grateful to get to see it firsthand and show it to you. So make sure you're checking in with us on social media. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Y'all, the theme continues. You aren't ready with like an incredible author that I have like revered for years. I cannot believe we got to talk to her. Y'all are gonna love her. 
Her name is Michelle McKinney Hammond. And we'll see you back here on Monday. Guess what? We're still talking about seasons. Yeah, we're still talking about seasons. We'll see you all on Monday. That sounds fun. That sounds fun.